Welcome to another episode of the Emulsion Podcast, a show for chefs who want to think better, increase their performance, and believe that it's possible to take lessons from what others have learned. I am your host, Justin Kana, and I'd love to continue the conversation with you from this episode on my online circle community. There you can share your two cents and learn about supporting the show on justinkana.com slash support. For your convenience, it's also linked up in the description of your podcast player. Let's get into the show. All right, folks, you loved the first round. We have Vincent Kazuhito Lau back on the Emulsion podcast this week. And this was a interesting interview because I wanted to give a different format than just a, oh, I have a guest back on the show. And so I created a very special set of questions for Vincent where I basically took a set of characteristics of humans, whether it's people that exist in my mind, previous coworkers, some of you folks sent me DMs and you tell me a little bit about yourself. And I wanted to pose the question to Vincent, if you are in this stage of your career, what would you buy? Like what gear would you kind of like think about investing in? How would you be weighing the options? What are some potential alternatives to something that might be already in your bag or on your cutting board right now? And ultimately I thought this was maybe a more structured and personal way to talk about gear with Vincent in a way that wasn't just kind of doing feature rundowns or talking about individual brands or the difference between this and this. I thought it was a very practical way to talk about gear because it's about humans, right? And so this is an interesting format. I would love your feedback if you enjoyed this, if you think this is something that we should do again. Of course, feel free to describe yourself in the YouTube comments if this is something that I can, you know, potentially craft and shoot an episode two of this in the future. The cool thing, and if you haven't checked out my interview with Sauri, I absolutely recommend that you do so, but we're affiliated with Corin now. So the channel is supported by Corin through affiliate purchases. So it's no extra cost to you. But if you happen to have your ears perk up when we talk about a specific knife or a specific type of person, and you want to go check that knife out, if you purchase, it does help out the show. So I really, really appreciate that. And again, it doesn't cost anything extra to you. And I'm really grateful for Corin as an affiliate partner with me on the channel. I'm going to give a special shout out to all of the supporters on the community because they allow me to take content risks like this. If you have thoughts to share, you want to continue the conversation in my community, you can obviously check that out in the description of this podcast. It's just five bucks a month and you get access to a bunch of other industry professionals who listen to the show, who watch the channel, who are trying to progress themselves in their careers. And I would love for you to go check that out. Plus, we have a gear talk page there where I do exclusive unboxings, behind the scenes content on the gear that I'm getting into the studio to create content for. And so if you want to get your questions in on gear before a video goes out on that piece of gear, that's the best place to do so. All right, that's enough intro. Please enjoy my conversation with Vincent. Vincent, yes. I'm back in New York, and you're back on the show. Absolutely. I'm glad to have you back. So a fun thing that we were talking about before the mics turned on that I want to try, let's see where this goes, is I'm going to try to hit, I'm going to say like 80% of the buckets that people might fall into when they come into shop at Corn. And I was hoping you could offer some gear recommendations, you're the source, that might help someone pick out some new gear. So I'm going to describe the person, and then we're in the showroom right now being able to look at all the knives, and you can let me know kind of like where your mind goes and maybe some runner-ups. So can I ask you uh, like questions about the person? Totally, too? totally, okay. totally, totally. So this one's kind of fun. It's the person who just got a promotion, and they want to treat themselves with okay. a new knife. Okay. What do you suggest? Or what do you see that's popular? Well, so then I got to ask yeah, yeah. questions, right? Is this person a professional? Is it someone that's like into cooking at home or are they using it for work? I think it's the person who like just went from like veg station to meat station. Okay. Or like just went from like working a station to like they're a sous chef now. Okay. They're a professional. Okay. So if it's something to treat yourself, you know, I think something special is going to be nice. So there's a couple things that come to mind. Um, you know, behind me we have the, uh, the WA series. Uh, so this is a uh, Western knife with a traditional Japanese handle, um, and then a lot of these are really high quality steel. Um, they're a lot lighter, they're thinner, they have a really nice feel to them. So something different from what you already have, right? It's a promotion, so you know to celebrate, uh, it's it's a really fun tool to use. And um, you get that you have them from Masamoto and Togiharu, it looks like. So we have Masamoto, Togiharu, and Suisen. The one I was thinking of actually is a Suisen Wa because it's so thin, it's so light, and uh, it's just a really nice experience to use. The first time I used that knife and I cut into a carrot, and it just blew my mind. Like, carrot felt like butter. Tight. The next person is, they're in culinary school, 
maybe they got their kit from the school as part of their education, or they're in some sort of program where tools were provided. They're probably your basic run-of-the-mill German something. Mm -hmm. And they want to make that first upgrade. They're like, I want to get a nice, maybe you can give a petty recommendation and a maybe like a chef knife profile recommendation yeah. for that person who's, you know, not wanting to completely break the bank, but they're like, I want something nicer than this $50 chef knife that I'm right. using. So a couple of things come to mind again. Um, so the Corin uh, Royal Blue Handle series, it's a great entry level knife and chef knives and petties both available in that series. It's made of 8A steel, so it makes it really easy to sharpen. And someone who's like still, still learning, uh, softer steel is gonna be easier to practice sharpening and get really your skills down. Um, so that one I think is a great choice. Uh, another one that comes to mind is the, um, the Togeharu uh, Molybdenum series. Similar, it's very durable, it's a great entry point. The, the key points are sort of the same, you know, easy to sharpen, and you don't want to spend too much for your first knife because you don't want to, you know, you're, you're going to mess it up, right? You're going to just scratch it, you're going to you're practice on it, so I think these are, these are what I would recommend. I think my first one was a UX10, which... You started with a great knife, by the way. Hugely, hugely <laughs> fundamental in me, like really taking knife ownership seriously. Yeah. But it was, it, it definitely felt like big shoes to fill when I bought that knife. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, the like, UX10 or, or Nunox, I know like, I, I've met so many culinary students that like jump straight to that, but because they don't have the fundamental skills of sharpening, it, it kind of, you don't really get the full potential of that knife out, you know? So I always like to recommend something that's a little bit easier to work with and less less expensive and then work your way up. Totally, totally. And it's more fun that way, you know? You right. can kind of always go get the next level. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this next person is, I'm calling them a prep cook on a food truck. So I'm describing their life as heavy production, lots of alliums or root vegetables that they're going through on the day to day, maybe a little bit of light butchery, but what they're craving in this in this purchase or this gear, you know, upgrade is is ergonomics. They want a long-lasting edge, and they want the ability to prep a lot at a time. So they want to have a cutting board full of stuff and just head through it. Um, so in terms of the shape or style, chef knife, uh, a large chef knife, 240, 270. That's going to be the most versatile knife. So you can do your meats and fish and prepping, pretty much everything. Um, and then in terms of steel something of a harder seal, like you said, to hold its edge. So UX-10 that you mentioned, nice. Misono's, yeah, that's yeah. a workhorse of a knife that's gonna you know, hold its edge and be able to do all that. Uh, another one that comes to mind is the uh, Togiharu G1. Okay. A little bit of a slightly heavier knife. The handle's a little bit larger, so. Is that the one with the gold text That's on the it? one with the gold text, yeah. yeah. Um, so I find that really comfortable in my hands. You know, if I'm using it for long periods, it just, you know, it's just more comfortable for me personally. Um, but UX10 and uh, G1, I think, are, are where to go. That's nice. Yeah. And they, they, those both come in 240s, yeah? 240s 240, and 270. 240, 270. Nice. And then, I mean, you can, uh, with the Misonos especially, you can go like 300 or even larger. Right, right, right. And okay. the funny thing is, like, Japanese chefs like big chef knives. Correct. So you'll see in Japan, like, 330s and, and huge ones, too. Yeah. It's so insane. I, I can't. I get stressed that I would, um, the ergonomics of how I cut would change if I used a knife that was that large. Right. And it would feel like I would, you know, do something where I would chip something. So you probably have to like, just adjust. You just have to adjust you how adjust. you cut. Well, the other thing is like New York City, or you said food truck for this guy. Yeah, right? yeah. Smaller space, maybe not a big knife. Totally, right? totally. Maybe 240 would be a good That's choice. That's an important distinction. Yeah. You gotta think about like how big is your station and no, how does absolutely. the knife feel on so the So I station. always say that like, we're in New York, um, so our kitchens are like tiny. Super right? So small. I'm always like, "Do you have space to accommodate a big knife?" And they're like, "Oh no, you know, I have a I have a workstation that's this yay big." I'm like, "Okay, maybe we'll go with the smaller a two ten." Yeah, for a two ten yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Okay, uh, this next person is a line cook in a. This is so funny because we just ate at a, a place that's like a New York izakaya restaurant. Okay. So it's. Um, you might have a lot of production to do, but you need a little bit of range. So you need to be able to kind of like split shrimp in half. You need to be able to clean mushrooms. Maybe you need to slice like chashu, you know, pork. What's, what's in the, and you, I, I say this person, cause maybe it's like they're moving from St. Louis to New York. Whatever gear that they happened to have before this was like fine, but they're like, I'm making the move. I'm really gonna start taking cooking professionally seriously. I'm gonna be a line cook at a New York City restaurant. 
what's like the kit for them? Maybe two two knives, three knives, maybe that you're. Well, thinking. you know what's funny is uh, a lot of chefs told me that they really like for that kind of scenario a smaller like a petty knife or a small santoku that's like um, seven inches, one eighty. And what they do is they leave it right by their cutting board. Uh -huh. So like when they need to grab something, oh, they got to clean mushrooms real quick. They just grab that small knife and they're able to do it. Or right before serving and plating, they just need to do a couple of slices. These smaller knives that are really nimble um, is, is a good option for that. Uh, because you're, it seems like a high volume place, I would also go with mid to harder steel. So uh, ones that come to mind, Togihara Inox, um, Misono 440, uh, Suisin Inox as well. These are again gonna be kind of a uh, mid-range, but hold its edge for a long time. Very versatile knives for the Santoku and the Petty. What I always found when I would set up my stations in that way where you are rotating between a couple of different knives, so you don't put so much pressure on one blade in your kit mm -hmm. so that you can usually almost like spread that workload across your week so that you're not having to just like every two days you have to hit your knife on a stone, right? Because right, right? Right. it's like, and, and especially with like petty tasks where sometimes you're on the board, sometimes you're off the board, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to go for that hard of a steel because it's not getting that exactly. abuse. Yeah, so you know, even softer steels, if you're using it in your hand, it's just gonna stay sharp longer. You know, it's not hitting anything hard unless you're constantly pitting avocados. Right. <laughs> uh, this next person is at a two-star or a three-star Michelin French or Italian spot. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of this kind of detail-oriented prep, kind of really precise knife cuts, maybe some, maybe a little bit of butchery, but like the protein's expensive, right? So they, it's gotta be they can't be hacking through this this protein, right? So so what's for them, that person? So I think something like that, you have a little bit more, uh, I guess, time to work on each piece, on each, each component. This right here, this is a, um, a single edge Yanagi that's really short, but it's it's kind of, uh, you can use it like a petty knife. And it's got a K-tip too. It's got a K-tip to it. Beautiful. And the single edge nature makes it extremely sharp. So if you're working with like, um, raw fish, for example, or raw proteins, it's really gonna do minimal damage to the structure as you're slicing, it really keeps it fresh and clean. Uh, so something like that, I think, would be a great uh, you know, addition to the arsenal in that scenario. The last person, and then I have a follow-up question that's gonna kinda tie a bow on this whole thing, is the dinner party throwing in Midtown Manhattan or maybe in Brooklyn the experimenting home cook. They take all of the cookbooks off the shelves and want to try everything. They want some potential pro features, but they don't need all of the bells and whistles with, you know, custom handle or, or, or you know, higher quality handle materials. They want just a little bit of those pro features and they want to feel like they're a pro home cook in, in a sense. What would you get for them? Uh, you know, that pretty much all the guys can really fit that, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So it's hard to say. Mm. Uh, you know what, I probably would recommend a Damascus knife in that situation because you got the quality steel. Aesthetically, it's beautiful and you know, in, in a kitchen, like you have your home party, friends come over, it's gonna impress them because it looks cool. Tight. Um, and then Damascus, we didn't talk about this too much, but um, a lot of the Japanese knives are asymmetrical. Right. Damascus is symmetrical, nice. meaning it doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed. And I'm, you know, I'm assuming there's gonna be people might helping you prep or something, so a Damascus knife, doesn't really matter. Anyone can use a knife and, and do well with it. Um, so I think, yeah, the Togiharu uh, the Hammer Damascus or the Corin uh, Nickel Damascus series, these are all going to be something that is suited for the scenario. I thought I was going to stump you in this. <laughs> I, we didn't go, we didn't rehearse at all. And you just, you just crush it. I the, mean, I do this every day, right? <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Every single thing, the show notes for this episode are going to be very robust mm -hmm. so that people can have like if you mention a brand or a line, it will be linked in the show notes or in the description of wherever you're watching this. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, if you're hit a time, a time, and, and we'll, we'll do our best to timestamp it too so that if you're listening and, and you're on the train right now and you're like, oh my goodness, I am that person. Right. That's what we designed this conversation to be. My, my, my last kind of question for you was going to be, what are the rules? You, you just gave us a ton of different knives, a ton of different profiles. And I know that you care for knives like nobody's business. What are the rules that apply to all of these folks, regardless of what knife they go with? What are the rules that apply? You know, one thing um, that I always like to say for, for a knife is that don't be afraid to use it. Don't be afraid to sharpen it. And then, you know, scratch it up a little bit because a knife is a tool, right? So 
whatever it is that the two, you know, remember that. Because some people buy a knife and they're like, it's so beautiful, I don't want to use it. But I don't know if I talked to you, you know, I've talked to some of the blacksmiths in Japan and they really take pride in how sharp and functional these tools are. And that's where their pride is at. So if you say it's beautiful and you're admiring it that way, yes, but also remember that it's a tool, you, they want you to use it. They want you to kind of uh, beat it up a little bit, you know? And then if it gets scratched, it's, it just shows that you've been using it and working with it. That's great. The, the one follow-up question that I did have and, and thank you again for coming back on the show because it's. I think that this is just a fun format. I geek out about this stuff. I really love this <laughs> format. By the way, so. No, it's perfect. Well, because a lot of the other like amazing content that you've been doing when you partner with like some of these larger channels is like recommend a one. It's it's like a vanilla suggestion, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's going to go like across the board. It's going to be great for you know regardless of who who wants to upgrade their kitchen setup, which is why you guys are such a fantastic place to come shop. But as, as you and I were talking before the mics turned on, like my audience is industry to a lot to a greater greater extent. The thing I ask a lot of my guests who come back on the show again is, is there something that you've changed your mind on in recent memory or since we last spoke? Something I changed my mind on. Um, like what do you mean? Like regarding like an example might be you know like I thought that we I, and this is contextual to Corin we were we needed to be open five days a week, for example. And you guys have obviously changed that with the showroom. So right. maybe maybe you change your mind on the fact that like maybe online is a big deal for us. You know, like that that might be an example. Um, let's see. Maybe well, it's something with sharpening or steel or or, or um, regions or makers that are making knives. Well, so a couple things like after you know dealing with the pandemic, uh, I guess one of the things that I really realized is like this is a strong industry. You know what I mean? We you know, we, we had hard times, like all the restaurants had hard times, but everyone got through it. And I don't know if it's something I, I changed, but it's more like I really felt was the support from our customers. You know, when we were closed, we literally shut down for a few months. We closed in March and we reopened in October. And during that time on my Instagram, I got messages from chefs like, hey, when are you opening? We can't wait to be in the store again. We can't wait to see you guys wow. again. And yeah, like I didn't change. Like I knew we had that following, and like you know, I respected that, and I was so appreciative of that. But like I really felt it during this time, and you know, once we opened, literally everyone's coming in every day. Like, oh, I can't, I'm so glad you guys opened again. You know, we love to come here. It, it's just been really, really amazing with the support we have in from the, from everyone. It happened right after Sarisan and I got off the interviews because like <laughs> someone was at the door waiting to come in and <laughs> needed, exactly, exactly. needed skewers for his restaurant down the street. <laughs> exactly. It's crazy. Uh, you know, we got Boudoir that opened up recently and then I, I talked to him and I was like, oh, you know, uh, let me know whenever I can help you. And he's like, yeah, you know, I can't wait every week on Mondays because that's when you open up and we can come back in. And I was sure. like, thank you so much, you know. That's so funny. So maybe to round off and as a last point, is there a knife that's in the case right now that you're just like stupid excited about that we, I didn't let you kind of like geek out on or, or a line that you're like, it's really cool that we get to carry this. Um, so just personally, like the knife that I don't have yet that I kind of want is the, uh, the Susan the premium Enox. It's a newer series. I just love the way it looks and feels and um, the steel is a newer, the newer steel that they finally were able to uh, use for this knife. Um, so I don't know, that's just the one I've been wanting and eyeing for a while now. So nice. I think that's one. Um, but we got so many knives. We're always getting some beautiful knives. So, you know, if you stop by the store, there's something new. Awesome. You know? Well, thanks again for coming back on, man. And uh, people know where to find you. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for you know, having me on the show again. Really awesome. appreciate it. What's up? Justin here again, because I mean, if you're still listening, you didn't not like this episode, right? And if that's the case, I'd like to think that you'd get value from the other work that I share here online. It's all focused on helping chefs and hospitality professionals perform better. If you don't have a lot of time, the best place to start is with the email newsletter that I write every single week called the 80-20 Edge. That's where I share knowledge on sharpening your skills, asymmetric upside, and exploring the industry beyond the status quo. And I say it saves time because I include all of the content that I published that week all in one place as kind of a weekly digest of sorts. Next up, you should check out my YouTube channel for gear reviews, clips from podcasts just like this one, and documented experiences from some of the best restaurants in the world. And lastly, 
Lee, if you'd like to learn about my intense cohort-based professional development focused course, get coaching from me to help you make your next move, or just support the show, you can check out justinconnor.com slash support. And if you do support this show already, that's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Finally, it really does help to share a review of this show on Apple Podcasts to help the podcast universe know that people like us like shows like this. And until the next episode, my name is Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one.